All right, so this is the one I'm looking at. So, all right, so I'm the environmental guy, all right, but I could sit in on a, uh, on a forge class, right? And if I sat in on a guy te teaching about forges and trying to convince me to do rotational grazing, because rotational grazing is a water quality practice. I mean, no doubt about it, all right? But it's also, again, it's a beef cattle production practice, okay? Because if you do continuous grazing, like, let's say this, all right? You're looking at maybe, oh, and this is destroyed, this is not a good example, but if you're doing continuous grazing, you're looking at a 20% grazing efficiency, okay? Versus rotational grazing is around 70, okay? So right off the bat, you've increased your production on your farm by about 40, 45% by shifting to rotational grazing, okay? Now, there's two things with rotational grazing. One is you've got to provide water within no more than 800 feet. The real rule is somewhere around 500 to 600 feet. That means an animal shouldn't walk more than 500 feet to get to water. So that means in order for rotational grazing to occur, you've got to have water in that pasture. But the concept with rotational grazing is, is that the animals are going to evenly distribute that manure across that field, okay? And then you're going to move them to the next. That's what they'll teach you. It's wrong, okay? Here's the data to prove it, okay? You look at this field, and basically, again, that soil test phosphorus in pounds per acre. And it's even color-coded, okay? So that field is right behind you. So there you go. You can just turn right around, and there it is, all right? So the water is up to your right, way up the top of the hill. It's about 1,600, 1,700 feet from that water to the end of this fence, okay? Where's the manure being distributed in this field? At the shade? Yeah. Under shade trees? Where else? Around that water? Yeah, that blue cross? Water. Right? Yeah. And along that creek. that creek. You with me? So that's that's food for thought. So now, I mean, so, and in the rest of the places, you have low fertility. It's not even up to the 45 that you need. And it's also, it's overgrazed, okay? Your animals ought to get pulled off when the grass is below four inches. Three is a minimum. Four is my number, okay? Because if you got that forage on there, then you cut down on your runoff, okay? So, so there's that, all right? And so, what else can I tell you? All right, next page. It's got three questions. One, are you satisfied? Two is what is your output? All right, so one, number one, are you satisfied? If I'm talking to a group of beef cattle producers, any producers, if they're satisfied with their operation, they are not going to change a single thing. <coughs> Usually during my talks, I go halfway through it, are you all satisfied? And they go, well, I was. <laughs> I'm not anymore, you know. I wouldn't be here if I was satisfied. There you go. So what's your output? You're, you're a beef cattle producer. What's, what, what's your output? What are you producing? Pounds, pounds of beef. Pounds, pounds of, of beef. beef. That's one way of looking at it, right? I got this little, I got this little graphic thing. It's like one of those ink block tests, you know. And you can, I can ask people, what do you see? And everybody sees something different. You're looking at the same picture and you see something different. All right. So, the, if, so if we agree that it's pounds of beef, all right, I look at it and I go, no, it's grass. You can't produce beef without grass. That's your output. That's what you need to be taken care of, okay? So, so that's what it depends on. So what does that grass depend on? What does the growth of that grass depend on? Water. If it doesn't have water, I mean water, what you got to understand about water, it's transient. It moves across, through, over a farm like this, okay? What we have to do to be beef cattle producers and be successful is we got to hang on to the water that's on our property, okay? So doing this, when we compact it, okay, and we cross that, that pore space, and we squeeze out that water, that means more runoff. We're not hanging on to that water on the farm, okay? We need to have organic matter. Organic matter adds water holding capacity. Every 1% organic matter adds 27,000 gallons worth of water. That's an acre inch. All right, so you take the droughts that we have every, every summer, okay? Would, it, would an extra inch of rain help us out? Would an extra two inches of rain help? Yes, it would, okay? So really, that's what we need to look at as far as our productivity. When we do this to a field, we have lost that productivity. 
What's this going to come back in? Weeds. 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 So now you got to spend money to renovate this, okay? Conversely, if we had this kind of situation with that concrete pad up there, like what we've got down at the end, but they're not using it. That's what we need to be doing this feeding, okay? All right? So let's see. What else? All right? So I got another one. All right? So the other thing it depends on is water. You got to have water in the fields, okay? So let's see. There's a water right down there. It's kind of like in the center of the field. If this was me, I'd have it up there, okay? I'd have the water up there, and I'm just, just imagine what I'd do is, is I'd keep this road, and I would add another fence line going up this way, and I'd cross fence this big, huge field right here. And I'd put that water up there, and I'd put in electric gates, or you could put in hard gates if you want, but I would use one water that basically sits on the edge of this road to water four pastures. Not one water to water one pasture. So that way I can harden that sucker, I can you know, put a lot of rock and concrete around it, and they're not going to tear it up. What they'll do around these is tear it to pieces, all right? So here's another one for you. This, I'm Steve, and I think, I think different, okay? I think out of the box. I want, you to, I want you to start thinking out of the box, too. Follow me on this one. This bunker right here, these animals just got through eating. What's the space allotment for that bunker per head? How much space do you want for each animal at that trough? Two and a half feet. Two and a half feet. Okay. How long will it take them to eat that diet? How many minutes? Some people say not long. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> say 30 minutes. I say 15. Okay. Can we agree? Okay. Here's the deal. The deal is, is this. Two feet of trough space and 15 minutes is the same amount of space and time it takes for that animal to get its daily water requirement. You should be able to water 10% of your herd at the same time and have enough water to water all the herd, okay, as far as replenishing rate. What do we do? We put in this. How many animals does that serve? Well, two at this point. If I put a fence and divided it, like I see all the time, it's one. How many times do you see animals fighting over a water source? Again, nothing happens without water. Grass is great, but nothing happens. Water is the most essential nutrient, okay? And, and so what you got to do is you got to make sure that that animal gets its daily requirement and it's not fighting over it. It's the same thing with us. Now, how many of you all go to the doctor and he says drink more water? Am I the only one? Seriously, I'm the only one. Okay? I said nothing happened. No, no metabolic activity. No reproduction. No elimination. No digestion. We got to make sure that we got plenty of clean water for these animals to drink. There's engineering rules on this, but this is what we end up doing. Do we ever drain those and clean those out? No? Yes? I do. Uh, he does. Because odor, I mean, if you get this close to that feed trough, they're going to drop a mouthful of feed in it, and it's going to go skanky. And odor is going to affect how much they drink, okay? You need them drinking clean water. Because the more clean water they're going to drink, the more pounds they're going to put on, okay? All right, so next slide. We also talked about basically, I mean, your output is grass. We've got to have water. What this is, it's two lines, orange and yellow. And what we did was we measured down a hill. That's why it's going down at an angle. We measured on the inside of a pasture and on the outside of the pasture, kind of like what this is, all right? So you see that soil loss, okay? On average, on this, going across all that data is 0.95 feet of soil loss, okay? How much topsoil you think we got on this ground right here? I mean, actual topsoil. AP horizon. Four inches. Four inches, maybe six. Right? I mean, and that was when the survey was done, you know, 30 odd years ago, okay? And if we erode it, then what are we down to? And what are we trying to grow on that? We'll be hard pressed to grow cockaburs on this come spring, right? Right? What we need is really good grass for, for good beef production. So, you gotta hang on to your soils. You can't see a 3 eighths of an inch soil erosion loss, but it's gonna make a huge hit in your production on your fields, okay? So we gotta, we gotta mine our soils, take care of our soils. Then I got this graph on raindrops, okay? There's a, there's a lot of different data on rain, okay? Because 
you know, it's like Forrest Gump said, you know, rain coming down, stinging rain. Sometimes it comes from the bottom, right? You remember that silly thing? It's the same thing with rain. There's a lot of different data out there, depending on the intensity, duration, so on and so forth, the size of the raindrops. But let's say you got rain coming down at 20 miles per hour, all right, big raindrops. One single raindrop can send soil two feet high and five feet from its origin, okay? The best way to look at it, because we're too smart to be out in the rain, right? We're smart. We don't get out in the rain. But when you look at the side of a barn, where it comes off the roof and it splashes up on the side of the barn, you can see it, right? You, that, and that's just a perfect illustration of it. So a one-inch rainfall weighs in more than 150 tons on that soil, on an acre. It's a locomotive, okay, in pressure, all right? Two inches per hour is the equivalent of 250 horsepower on an acre. What that means is that's the force to be able to lift the top seven inches of the soil to a height of three feet, 86 times during an hour. You with me? Rainfall is a huge amount of compaction. My point in bringing all this up is, is if your production is not beef, it's grass. And if you don't have cover, then basically you don't have food for those animals to eat. And if you don't have cover, you're going to have erosion. If you have erosion, you can have soil loss, and then that's going to hit you again. So this is a compounding cyclical problem that we got to solve if we want to be a good beef cattle production. Okay? All right. Anything else? That's good on this one. We'll do the other stuff. It's another point. Charles? We've got farmland looks just like this this morning. How do you get that better? Because every spring we go out, we disc it, re it. It's the same deal. After a while, you get to the point you tell the boys for that hay, Turn up the least amount of ground you can. Yeah. Just do an acre, half an acre. But I don't see any shelter out here for these cows. No. Would you put a shelter out there, a shelter to get the wind and keep the water off where they could get dry? If yes. we got this situation we're dealing with every year anyhow. Yeah. We don't have any option. And then really I'd like to talk about that when we get over to the next spot. But that's okay. that's good that's good stuff to bring up. It's good it's good food for thought. But yeah, I mean I don't like to see this. Uh, at all, because I mean, and you could come in, we could chain harrow this, or we did, we could disc it, but tillage is a problem. You're going to lose more soil to erosion yeah. through tillage than than not by tillage. What you need again to have is a canopy over and keep this animal, to keep this area in grass, which means we got to have other structures. We got to we got to combine other things. I was doing a forage class one time, and they said, Steve, we're going to put you on the forage program. I'm like, great, I'll talk about this stuff, and then I'll talk about doing some confinement in the wintertime. And they were like, and heavy traffic pads and winter feeding. They go, no, 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 this is just about grass. We're just on growing grass. I go, no, you got to carry it out. This is, we can't grow grass when it goes dormant in the wintertime or during the droughts that we have. We don't have grass growing, so we got to do something else. It's, again, thinking out of the box. Okay? So let's see, we'll ride around the corner. Uh, I won't...